So since many of you enjoyed the recent Talent Watch special report, I've decided to make it an ongoing segment here on Beyond the Trailer. And since talent both in front of and behind the camera are important to putting out good movies, I'm going to continue to focus on both. Today, director James Wan. Now while you might not be familiar with Wan's name, you've certainly heard of his creation, Saw. Yes, Wan was one of the directors to usher in the new era of gore, and some would say torture porn, into the horror genre before Oren Pelly would evolve things once again with his found footage blockbuster Paranormal Activity. But perhaps what kept Wan from initially making a splash was it was Saw he was part of a team, co-writing the film with aspiring actor Lee wan L, whom he'd met in college in their native Australia. And to make matters worse, when Saw blew up at the Sundance Film Festival, Wan and wan L found themselves ensnared by the Hollywood machine, not unlike one of Jigsaw's traps. Encouraged by their agents to quickly lock up film deals before Saw had theaters, so that even if it flopped, they'd have another gig guaranteed, Wan and wan L signed on for two more flicks, where it wasn't just the deals that were rushed, but their creative process as well. The resulting dead silence and death sentence both fizzled at the box office and failed to even find a cult audience. But the failure of these two films, and that the Saw franchise had gotten away from them, Wan spearheaded a move to get himself and wan L away from the Hollywood machine. Literally. Teaming up with Oren Pelly, the duo made Insidious, an independent horror film where Wan even co-edited the film himself. Made for just $1.5 million, Insidious went on to gross almost $100 million worldwide, giving Wan and wan L a saw-level hit, but where this time they had total creative control. But while wan L continued to focus largely on acting and writing, Wan finally began to get some recognition in Hollywood as a hot new director to be taken seriously. What's more, the box office success of Insidious garnered him respect from the studios, as it proved he had a vision that was in sync with horror audiences. Yes, Wan did find himself still confined to the horror genre, despite expressing an interest in branching out. But little did he know he was about to be offered one of the genre's biggest opportunities ever. See, after much negotiating, New Line Cinema and parent studio Warner Brothers finally had everything in order to make a movie about real-life paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren, who had famously, or some would say infamously, investigated the Amityville horror. They turned to want to direct, and he just couldn't say no. He then brought along his insidious star Patrick Wilson, hoping they could make box office lightning strike once more in 2013. Or is that twice more in 2013? See, Juan and Wilson will also release Insidious Chapter 2 this fall, which Juan now has returned to the fold to write. Both films are on track to do huge box office, particularly The Conjuring, which is tested so well Warner Brothers decided to release it in July, right at the height of the summer movie season. But will such success only doom Juan to the horror genre forever? I'm sure there are worse fates, especially ones he and Juanal can think of. It's also worth noting that while for ages film directors were mostly white men, Juan is part of a growing group of Asian directors who've made it onto the studio's shortlists. Of course, there's Ang Lee and John Woo, but there's also Justin Lin, John M. Chu, and most recently Park Chen Wook and Ji Won Kim. Do you think Juan is the new master of horror? And if so, what makes his horror film so unique? Write your thoughts down below. And be sure to keep an eye out for more Talent Watch episodes coming soon. But in the meantime, check out these recent spotlights.